Yeah, thank you very much, Shouting. Um, so just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Tom Blomley. Um, I'm working on the learning initiative, um, uh, principally involved in, in work around evaluation. Um, and as Shouting has said, um, I actually had the chance to, uh, to visit both uh, Ghana and Lao PDR uh, to review uh, FIP activities going on there um, and have a chance to talk to different stakeholders, both within and outside the FIP program, to try and get a sense of um, the, the financing arrangements and, and early results that are beginning to flow from those, uh, from those two countries. But as mentioned, there's also been a number of desk studies and other sources of information, interviews and so on. So what I'll try and do very briefly is, is really summarize some of the very, very broad um, key areas that, that are coming out from this. Uh, they're very early, they're tentative uh, findings. Um, but we're putting them out there really to try and generate some discussion and uh, get, uh, get, get your interest. So really the first slide, what I've tried to do is to categorize in a way uh, the principal uh, financing modalities um, that the PIP has been using um, across its portfolio. Uh, and these are not in any way, um, you know, complete list. There are other, other, other modalities and so on. But first of all, probably the, one of the biggest uh, categories of of investments or what we're calling enabling investments. Um, these primarily flow through um, public uh, sector projects to, to, to government through, um, through grant arrangements and they provide support to a whole range of policy processes, capacity processes, um, financial de-risking as well to, to some private sector capacity support. Um, so it's those sort of trying to reduce barriers to investment really um, uh, around a whole range of issues. We've seen um, in Ghana, for example, uh, the FIT program working a lot on, on, on tree and land tenure, which are significant constraints to investment. And within Laos, um, there is support to, uh, to, to timber uh, plantation companies around capacity building, trying to help them engage uh, more with communities. The second um, model there is, is also a large, it's 53% of the total portfolio. Um, it's really support to very low level, micro level, um, family-owned, sometimes um, informal sector income-generating activities, um, and these are sort of happening within, largely within rural communities around forest, uh, within forested areas. Um, in some cases, they're supported through uh, village loan or grant funds, uh, which are then used uh, through a community uh, process to identify and select uh, income-generating activities in light of those activities. I think the key here is that. The emphasis is really on the, the financial support and the process of selection of the IGAs. But in most cases, and this is, this is again a general finding and not, not in all cases, they are, they're mostly around that aspect of, of, of establishing the, the enterprises, but there's relatively little support uh, to business incubation or, or links to, to market and market support and engagement with the private sector. The third uh, cluster there is we're calling it business incubation with finance. And this is really where um, technical assistance um, through tailored uh, grants or credit to small enterprises um, is supported with business incubation uh, support. Um, it's a relatively small amount of the portfolio. We, we've calculated around 3%, but the work that PIP is doing in Mexico, for example, with uh, community forestry groups and communities there, but also we've seen uh, a spin-off project uh, working in Ghana uh, which is scaling up uh, and, and taking the work of the FIP program through another donor, in this case DFID, um, working on, on a, in a broader landscape area. And then finally, um, investment finance only. And this is really just a direct financing to, um, to, 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 to usually to large scale companies um, involved in generally in, in forestry activities. So plantations, uh, this sort of thing, and generally not linked to, fine, uh, to technical support. So examples of that in Ghana, uh, the support to a, a Dutch company called Form Ghana, who are supporting um, plantation establishment within uh, government forest reserves. So briefly, just turning to, to some of the strengths, um, if you like, of the, of the models that we've discussed, I think what comes out really strongly is that um, the, the process of developing national investment plans through a sort of participatory um, process uh, which, which provides a strategic and programmatic um, flow of investments. I think this is really a, 
a unique strength of the of the of the support provided by FIPS this 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 um, in this area. I think secondly the the anchoring within national government ministries and and high up within those government ministries um, within people anchored with people who have um, significant influencing and decision making authority provides unique opportunities for particularly these enabling investments we've talked about uh, linking to policy and, and regulatory. If you look at other non-fit uh, financing mechanisms, it often goes directly to individual enterprises or companies um, to the private sector. And this broader policy work is, is, is much less of an emphasis within the, within the activity. So I think that's a real strength. Um, thirdly, I think by anchoring it within, within a single ministry, there is this, through the strategic aspect of the investment plan, I think in many countries we're beginning to see these uh, external links to other government agencies, which again provide uh, the enabling aspects in terms of uh, policy, regulation, whether it's to do with legality or taxation or, or support through, through other sector ministries. So again, I think these are, these are rather unique aspects of, of, of the support provided. Turning to some of the um, limitations, perhaps, um, I think what we have identified, one of the key areas we've identified, um, where there's uh, perhaps work still to be done, is on the whole aspect of business incubation and development for small and medium enterprises. We've pointed out the example from, from Mexico, where actually this is happening, but it seems to be more the exception rather than the norm. So we've seen this strong emphasis on, on, on participatory bottom-up identification of income generating activities, which I think is a great strength, but then a limited emphasis on really providing the, the business uh, development skills, incubation skill, uh, support and market linkages to really enable those um, micro activities to become uh, sustainable in the long term. I think the second area is, is limited support, um, financial services and so on to small and medium producers. So, in general, the, the, the loans or grants tend to go either at the very bottom to the, to the very small scale family, um, household, uh, livelihood activities we, we talked about through village level uh, funds or, or grant schemes, or um, they tend to go to the large scale big companies um, through IFC or through other uh, MDBs um, in support of large scale private sector programs. But, but this middle, if you like, this middle uh, ground of, of medium um, small and medium enterprises, I think we're, 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 we've seen less emphasis and this might be something that we could discuss later. The third area, perhaps where there's limited support is to the uh, this sort of aggregation function. So if you've got many, many individuals uh, or groups uh, working on particular uh, subsectors or value chains, helping to, to take that up to a national level, to aggregate that to, for example, national or producer organizations, uh, cooperatives and so on, which helps generate marketing uh, opportunities, uh, economies of scale um, and potential for influencing and advocacy. I think finally, we talked uh, in the previous slide about the strengths of the FIP in terms of its anchoring within government and that strategic opportunity in terms of engaging on policy and so on. But I think certainly um, one area that, that does, does come out is by, by, by linking it so strongly with government, the, the, the links to private sector, it, it doesn't come naturally necessarily to a, to a government ministry. The, the skills um, and, and, and the techniques and tools to engage with, reach out to, engage and enlist the support of private sector is not something which is necessarily uh, of first nature to, to, to some of the ministry staff. So I think this is a gap that perhaps could be, could be strengthened. Going to the, the final slide, um, as Shaoqing said, we, we wanted to throw out some questions that, that perhaps you could um, keep in mind during the webinar and we can discuss as we go through it and um, think about as, as you listen to the, to, the, to the other presenters. But building on some of the key findings, I think there are three questions that emerge. One, this aspect of business incubation, how, how, in your experience, how do you think FIT could better support that aspect of business incubation? Um, to make it sustainable and effective. Secondly, the, 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 the excellent work in supporting communities and households develop income generating activities, livelihood support and so on, how can that be um, really developed further to, 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 to give that 
um, leads to market to be taken to scale and so on and to be to be uh, truly sustainable. Um, for example, this 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 work on the apex level organisations is that something that could be could be strengthened. And then finally, um, where, how and when can 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 FIC provide support to um, to these small scale producers um, and their organisations um, in ways that can attract additional financing and funding so that we can once again take that to scale. So these are three general questions which emerged from some of the key findings. And I think uh, I've run out of time, so I'll leave it there and hand back to Shatter.